Now, as you guys know, I have uh, been the subject of many videos in the past several years. People do not like Ethan. Ethan is a hypocrite. He is greedy. He stopped making H3 videos because I'm like the worst person that has ever lived. Well, Ethan, I wouldn't take it that far, but you are in fact hypocritical, lazy, and greedy. I am guilty of all of those things. And I think today is the day that we put an end to all of it. It's time to stop! As we all know, in just the last few years, Ethan Klein has managed to go from one of the most likable and popular creators on all of YouTube to a hypocritical and bitter old man who does nothing with his life aside from mindlessly insulting any human on planet earth that just so happens to disagree with him uh he's such a tool he's such an idiot and a, such a fucking loser um it's just, it's just incredible, and even, you know... And Ethan becoming a worse version of who he was before is not just in my opinion. It's actually a factual statement backed up by statistics. Our audience, it's kind of crazy, I never expected it, but like, it's, predom and it's predominantly a uh, woman. Yeah, it's crazy. It's 60% yeah. women, 40% men, so it's, it's not crazy, it's almost like a 50-50, but before... We were 90% men. Yeah. And so we lost a lot of our, of our, the, the male viewers. Yeah. Even his own fans who once loved him have proven over time that they dislike him so much that his initial audience has essentially completely abandoned him and his new content. And if that's not telling enough to you, for the past two years the general public has consistently been taking time out of their day to go and unsubscribe from his original YouTube channel that he doesn't even post on anymore. So today we're going to be taking a deep dive into Eaton Decline, expose his hypocrisy and vile toxicity, his pandering to the same people that he once used to mock, his clothing brand Teddy Fresh and Steela Klein, and his overall net negative impact on society as a whole. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. I don't think I'm a hypocrite. Despite what Ethan wants you to believe, there is not a single human on all of YouTube who is a bigger hypocrite than Ethan Decline. I think I'm a hypocrite. Look at that, the guy can't even say this one sentence without being a hypocrite. <laughs> <Got he. laughs> in all seriousness, let's talk about Ethan's main form of hypocrisy, which is just straight up lying in front of a camera while talking into a microphone. Let's take a look at what Ethan had to say just a few years ago about how he thinks black people are scarier than white people because of the color of their skin. <laughs> they're like these huge black dudes and they're all strapped. They were all black. There was like 10. Where I'm just they? saying, they were every single one of them was black. Okay, I don't even, I don't even pay attention to color, color or anything. If there's eight dudes on security <laughs> and they're all black, I think that's worth noting. I mean, they were all like six five black yeah. dudes. Yeah, yeah, that's terrifying. Is a six five black dude scary more than a six five white dude? No, is it supposed to? How do I get out of this? Okay, Ethan, it's not exactly the best take. I'd say they were probably scary because they were allegedly all six foot five, which is eight inches taller than the average adult male, all strapped, and of course, because there was eight of them, not because they're black, but then again, this is coming from this same guy. I grew up in the suburbs of, of Los Angeles, Ventura. Yes. And I grew up, I almost, I don't think I've ever known a black person. Really? What? But anyways, let's take a look at what this grown man has to say about this exact same topic just a few years later. Dude, there's nothing scarier than like young white men, a group of young white men. In my opinion, <laughs> yeah, bro, literally. those motherfuckers pop off in yeah, weird ways. There's... It can't be both. That is physically impossible. Which one is it? Are the black people scarier or is it the white people? It cannot be both. This is grifting in 4K. You cannot make the exact same statement, but on two completely opposite sides on video and expect to not be called a hypocrite. Oh, Ethan's a hypocrite. Maybe that wasn't enough to convince you that this guy is a hypocrite. Let's take a look at this PewDiePie situation from a few years ago. So if you guys don't remember, PewDiePie said the N-word after getting killed in a video game, which Ethan, who's Felix's friend, by the way, went on to say this. I don't think Felix is a racist person. But, god damn, he really kind of just was really comfortable using that word. <laughs> that really just kind of 
I agree with that, he did seem a little bit too comfortable using that word, but using it once doesn't necessarily mean he's racist, but it's definitely not a good thing to be saying while live streaming. But coming from this guy, of all people? I love that I can just say Nick. It would actually be hard to find someone who said the n-word on camera more than Ethan Klein. I can't show it because my channel would probably get permanently banned, but if you guys want to watch this guy saying the n-word very, very comfortably, by the way, on video, you can watch this video right here where he says it more than 20 20 times. Do, is it racist to refer to black people as blacks? Not only did he say it, but he went on to brag about his excessive usage of the n-word years later. What can you do to me? I've already said the n-word. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't take me down. Well... Uh, I've already said the n-word. Live. Let's not invite You, can, you can't touch me. He, H3's a hypocrite. Oh, because no. he said... How about just recently, when his friend Andrew Callahan got accused of doing some pretty bad stuff with women, Ethan went on to make this video. I tweeted out something today that was in effect saying something like, famous men should not have random sex uh, with, with anyone, especially fans and when alcohol is involved. Because Andrew, his friend, is an alleged creep, as a result of that, all famous men should stop having intercourse while under the influence of alcohol. Okay, I mean, it's one of the worst takes I've ever heard, but obviously nobody famous is going to listen to that garbage, especially coming from a miserable dude like Ethan, who can't even get it up. <coughs> my dick feels like a piece of wood. Like I have no sensation in my penis. <coughs> side effect. And I'm fat, by the way. Also a side effect. He said it, not me. I'm trying to be as nice and respectful as possible here. But then, I remember that Ethan did this to Myron from Fresh and Fit less than a year ago. This is very bad. I think like, he may have assaulted you. I mean, at this point, I... Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to say that, but like, again, like... How can anyone defend this man? When it's someone he likes, he's willing to go so far out of his way to defend that person from those allegations that he tries to implement these artificial rules for all famous men as a blanket statement. But when it's someone that he personally dislikes, he's willing to try and frame that person for a literal crime that even the person telling the story is willing to say... Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to say that, but like, again, like... In what world? World, is this not hypocritical and disgusting behavior? I just realized that I just became a really awful shitty person. How about when he criticized Keemstar for thriving off making videos about Jake Paul? This is a fucking nearly 40 year old man who thrives on making videos about Jake Paul. Let's let's turn to him for the news. Wait, how old is Ethan? Oh, okay, I got confused there for a second because he looks like he's 20 years older than Keemstar. But anyways, Ethan probably hasn't made that many videos about Jake Paul, right? Six videos about Jake Paul? What do you even talk about for that long? I made one and I thought that was too many. And the L3L3 fans watching this might say that's just clickbait, right? By the way, the show, I mean, I, I, mean, look, I, don't, need to, I don't need to clickbait. We're okay, all right? I'm not like desperate for more clicks. Actually, guys, it's fine, because Jake Paul's name has only been mentioned in about 250 different H3 podcast episodes. H3's a hypocrite! Mm. I didn't watch the podcast, Isn't but this nice? guy says he's a hypocrite! I don't know, guys. I'm starting to see a tad bit of hypocrisy here. What about his interviews with Dr. Jordan Peterson? If you take a look at his channel, they're both gone. Well, would you look at that? Lies in writing and says it was before he was familiar with his politics, despite the fact that this is verifiably false, considering the way that Ethan introduced him. Our guest is Jordan Peterson. He is a Canadian clinical psychologist, cultural critic, and professor of psychology at the University of Toronto. He came to wide prominence after speaking out against a new Canadian law, making it illegal to call someone by a pronoun that they don't identify with. Um, he's a critic of white privilege, culture appropriation, postmodern feminism. It's almost as if he thought nobody on earth could download or find the episode prior to tweeting this. Not only did he lie in writing, he later went on his podcast with his fellow grifter friend, La Sanabi, and doubled down on that lie. I thought the conversation was great. It was a really interesting conversation. I didn't know anything about his politics 
on like he's a critic of white privilege culture appropriate he's obviously transphobic you know and um Ah, the old delete the evidence, then say the exact opposite thing, then just refer to anyone you dislike as a transphobe. Classic Ethan Decline. And it's just really weird looking back on this because when Ethan was a somewhat normal person, they both actually enjoyed their first conversation so much, despite the civil disagreements, that Ethan actually brought him on for a second podcast less than a year later. Today's guest is the great and wonderful and one of our all-time favorite guests, Dr. Jordan Peterson who has graced us with his presence yet again. I can't make this up, guys. One day, he's one of Ethan's favorite guests. The next, he's a monster who doesn't even deserve to be platformed in any possible way, despite the disagreements. But wait, guys. Justin Roiland, a man who's been charged with falsely imprisoning a woman and domestic battery, that's totally fine. He can be openly platformed, not just once, but twice. A man who's been accused of grooming children as young as 15 years old via text communication with mountains of proof that's available to the general public that he's personally reviewed on his podcast. That's fine. That can stay up because he's Ethan's friend, of course. But God forbid you have a civil disagreement with Ethan on video and he disagrees with your personal political beliefs years after those conversations occurred, those videos gotta go. They're dangerous to society. Of course, there is zero consistency with this man. But wait, it gets worse. And look at how those bulging eyes are popping out. Slow down on the Adderall, my man. Or is it all those antidepressants you shove down your f***ing throat? It's that one is oh. tasteless. That one is is not good. That's not a good take. <laughs> He's such an asshole. The antidepressants I shoved down my throat. That's a bad take, dude. Okay, yeah, I think that is a little bit tasteless from Jamari. I do agree. But that being tasteless, coming from this guy? Since he basically, you know, went to Russia and got a blood transfusion for some crazy experimental treatment for benzo addiction... His mind is just all unhinged, man. Ethan calling anyone else unhinged is just rich. What exactly does the Catholic Church do except rape kids? Especially given the fact that he follows it up with dietary advice. Or the meat diet, too. That can't be helping. Bruh. The meat diet cannot be helping his emotional state. Life's too short to exercise. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> there are so many better things to do than exercise. Jamari might have said something he shouldn't have said this one time. But if we compare that to how many times Ethan has literally bullied Jordan for his former benzo addiction, an actual real addiction that could have potentially ended the man's life, it's not even close to comparable post benzo post clarity Bible. more like Bible. i just came out of my benzo haze and i had a moment of clarity <laughs> anyway i'll see y'all later do you know what the benzo what's the benzo treatment industry yes here it is ethan making fun of jordan's benzo addiction is a new low yes making fun of mental health wow ethan do they have a point there is probably more than an hour of footage of Ethan doing exactly what he just said is that one is oh. tasteless. And look, if this was a one-off thing, I get it. If you watch anyone's content for enough hours, there's going to be inconsistencies. But literally everything Ethan criticizes others for doing, he does exactly that on video. The fact of the matter is, Ethan Klein is undeniably a hypocrite. I think I'm a hypocrite. The man continues to sit on his high horse and judge others and bully other online creators for the exact same behaviors that he consistently displays himself doing and oftentimes does it 10 times worse. I could keep going on about Ethan's hypocrisy for hours, but I'm sure you all get the point by now and this is just the beginning of Ethan's insanity. Let's move on to him becoming exactly what he used to make fun of. Given the type of content that he makes nowadays, I'm just to saying, if you're gonna up, shoot up anything, don't mm. make it. Mm. Ethan and his old videos have aged like raw milk. Here's my point each side hates each other so much that there's like, they're so clouded by hate and judgment that nobody fucking listens. I agree 100%, and what he just said is exactly the problem with Ethan today. You see, Ethan genuinely believes that the general public's perception of him has shifted primarily because he's a Democrat and he thinks a lot of his old fans were Republicans. I think a lot of it comes from pol political stuff too. I think 
Like, I think that in a certain point of my career, I was making a lot of videos about social justice warriors right. and feminists and all this shit. And I think that I attracted quite a bit of more conservative leaning mm -hmm. audience there. The truth is anyone that follows this podcast or knows I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a Democrat. That is one of the most delusional things I've ever heard in my entire life. I think most rational people are totally okay with accepting the political opinions of others because they are exactly that opinions. There is another side to every single viewpoint and that should be respected. Just like in 2016 when Donald Trump won the election, this is what the normal Ethan had to say about that. Clinton supporters also letting their thoughts be heard. Ethan wrote this one, congrats to everyone who supported Trump. I voted for Hillary, but this is a democracy and I respect the process. He achieved the impossible. Which I didn't see Ethan getting much hate from his majority fascist fan base when he wrote that nice and respectful tweet. But as opposed to just sticking to his word and not leading with hatred when it comes to political discourse, nowadays Ethan really loves doing exactly that. I hope his I hope he I hope his wheelchair hits a big old rock and he fucking tumbles out of that. You know he's in a wheelchair. Not that no. there's anything wrong with that, but I just hope that someone puts a stick in his fucking wheelchair and he tumbles out of his seat. And he goes, help me. Yes, Ethan, because someone disagrees with your political opinions, it's totally fair to hope that a man who's permanently paralyzed from the waist down should tumble out of his wheelchair and to then go on and weaponize the fact that he went through a life-threatening situation and claimed that God was trying to kill him is absolutely disgusting. They're so clouded by hate and judgment. That's not being blinded by hatred at all, right? The NRA meeting that's today in Texas, someone should that building. Yeah, I think this stuff is pretty hateful, Ethan, and it's just really ironic because part of the reason why he initially got famous is because he would sometimes make these reaction videos to SJWs and kind of just make fun of them a little bit. But he was never making fun of or dislike those people because they tended to be liberals like he's always openly been. It was because they were typically very extreme in their worldview, like the humongous lady. He said, he said, do you know what my name is? And I said, said what? Well, and he said, humongous. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? She reacted as if he fucking <laughs> punched her in the vagina. Why do you say punch in the vagina? That's... Who would do that? Exactly. That's what, exactly. It's that shocking. Who would do that? That video is still funny to this day, but it's not funny because she's a Democrat. It's funny because that woman is objectively insane. And instead of being able to acknowledge the fact that he's become the exact same extreme SJW that he once used to make fun of, like a normal person would, Ethan just refuses to face the truth. Just gonna say, if there's Ooh, another sorry. Holocaust and people start oh, rounding up the Jews, Yes, what he said there was so disgusting, I had to cut it out because I'd probably get banned if I played the whole thing. And Ethan will do and say things like this constantly. If you just so happen to disagree with his personal political opinions, he will consistently have the most extreme response possible, like saying he hopes someone never has another peaceful meal again, and luckily because he's an alleged comedian who's less funny than Deaf Noodles, by the way, absolutely everything can be written off as just comedy. Can you talk about pizza? Pizzagate, when the Catholic Church is literally a satanic cult. Including direct calls to action on video. Is it bad advice to say, like, go outside Ted Cruz's house in the air? Yes. 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 Oh. Despite Ethan being almost 40 years old, he's not able to understand the very simple concept that there's an opposing viewpoint to all of his political opinions and that should be respected. And that's just really sad because when Ethan was younger, he would speak out against this same issue openly and now he does exactly that. And that's also why Ethan Klein is a grifter with absolutely no integrity. When the spectrum shifted to where it was more profitable to be the SJW than to react to them, that is also exactly when Ethan decided to become what he once used to mock. That is not a coincidence. Let's take a quick look at the fan base that Ethan has cultivated over the last few years as a result of his political extremism. Ancient men and some women of the H3 subreddit, stop referring to women as females. Now, I had never, I, for, I don't know what, for whatever reason, I, I guess I'm guilty of saying females. Up. Say what? Up until recently, I stopped. I started saying women. What can you do to me? I've already said the N-word. Um, 
because uh I guess I was I I kept saying females Say what? Uh, over at Teddy Fresh in chats and stuff and Eel was like you have to stop saying that and I was like what? Say Say what? What? Say what? So there is a uh, movement to uh, request to men and all people to stop saying female female people dislike ethan because he became exactly what he used to make fun of and because ethan is a youtuber it happened right in front of our eyes there's nothing inherently wrong with change i cannot stress that enough we all change as time goes on and that is totally fine in fact i encourage it but what you change into is far more important than just changing and changing from this don't fucking listen to me don't listen to Casey. We're just, I'm just a YouTuber. How does that qualify me to tell you who to vote for? Who to fucking elect as president? To this? Elon Musk, who is now the uh, prominent conservative thinker of the world, has endorsed this lady uh, Republican candidate uh, named Mara Flores. Yeah. And he voted for her. First time ever voting Republican. What? First time ever voting Republican. What the fuck? Is sad. As opposed to becoming more wise and more understanding of others as time went on, Ethan just became infinitely more hateful. He's obviously transphobic, you know, and, um... There are 14-year-old teenagers out there that are more understanding and more empathetic to opposing viewpoints than this man-child. And that is a huge problem given the fact that he's almost 40 years old and he has a massive fan base. And I feel bad for those people more than anything. Next, we need to move on to Ethan and Steela Klein's clothing brand, Teddy Fresh, which in my opinion is by far the worst merch company in the history of YouTube. Ethan and Hila Klein own this company called Teddy Fresh. Since its inception, they have straight up stolen countless designs from other companies, and they have done this consistently. Given the track record here, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if for once they released clothing that was actually originally designed. I mean, the designers at this company must just be sitting on their ass all day, going on Google at 4.30, looking for the best copyrighted images and clothing they could find, and just pitching that in their next morning meeting. In all seriousness, people do this kind of stuff in the clothing industry all the time, and there's a lot of licensing agreements that happen, whatever. But Ethan has gone out of his way to trash other brands for doing exactly Exactly what his brand does. I am against fa fast fashion. It's very bad for the world. And usually they steal their designs too from other people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make this up guys, and to be honest, I wouldn't blame their designers for stealing designs. If we take a look at Teddy Fresh's Glassdoor account, which is a website which allows people to see reviews from people who work there, it's not looking too good for the clients. 3.3 out of 5 is an objectively horrific score, and given how much income this company produces and how much Ethan and Steela make, uh, and okay, we're rich. They're most likely paying these people well. It's obvious that these people actually hate working there so much, they're choosing to leave bad reviews on their account. And we have to keep in mind, these are just the people who took time out of their day to write these reviews. It doesn't paint the whole picture. I could imagine what's going on behind closed doors is far worse. And I also find it very hypocritical that as much as Ethan pretends to care about social issues here in the US, but the clothing for his garbage merch company, which is disgusting overpriced by the way is created by underpaid workers in China now look obviously not all labor in China is forced labor or child labor sure but even if you're Ethan and Hila's biggest fan we should all be able to admit from an unbiased perspective that this clothing is overpriced and it's produced in China we, we work with China on Teddy Fresh because the laborers there are getting paid far less than what they'd have to pay people that could ethically create this same exact product and I don't trust I don't trust China with shit you know, 
they're crazy. Ethan and Hila are not working directly with manufacturers in a communist country because they love it so much. They're working with manufacturers in that country because they don't pay those human beings doing the work and creating their merchandise reasonable wages, thus making them far more money. Almost all the clothing I own is made in China. I couldn't possibly care less as long as it's cheap, but I buy t-shirts that cost less than $10. Teddy Fresh t-shirts cost more than $40. And my problem with this is Ethan's criticisms of other companies who do the exact same thing. Go, Sorry, you don't it. sell fucking $12 jeans for, for uh, that's made in America. Trust me, that shit is made by children slaves in China. Bruh. Don't sue me, please. If we compare other companies that make their clothes in China, like H&M, Forever 21, their clothing is dirt cheap, and they pass those savings on to their customers. Teddy Fresh does the exact opposite. They charge high prices for cheaply produced 99% nylon and polyester clothing, where they have a confirmed track record of stealing designs, and then Hila wants to say this. Is this really, from your perspective, I'm going to ask you seriously, I... is this good merch? It's very good. 35 is too cheap. It's too cheap? Yeah. How disconnected from reality do you have to be to step in front of a camera and unironically say 35 is too cheap. It's too cheap? Yeah. For a t-shirt with a logo on it. That is straight up delusional, specifically given the fact that it's backed up by the action of selling $65 and $55 t-shirts on your website. And again, it's merch, whatever. I would have no problem with this if Ethan and Hila weren't constantly sitting on their high horse and pretending like these two really care about social justice. You cannot have it both ways. Either it's all okay or none of it is. If we compare Teddy Trash to PewDiePie and his wife's merch brand, Tezuki, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but they have an entire page on their website that explains exactly how and why their clothing is ethically sourced. And that's great. Me personally, couldn't care less. To the best of my knowledge, I've never bought any ethically sourced clothing once in my life. But what I'm saying is, these people are clearly putting their money where their mouth is. They obviously care about this kind of stuff, and they specifically say on their website, in writing, that no child labor is used to make this clothing and the pricing of their clothes is still 10 times more reasonable than what Teddy Fresh is selling their clothes for. Hila and Ethan want to sell disgustingly overpriced merch, but also on the back end, behind the scenes, produce the merchandise as cheaply as humanly possible, but then also criticize other brands for having unethical working conditions and mocking sweatshops in China. This is in America. This sounds like, like conditions in sweatshops in China. Come on guys, in what world is this not hypocritical? But it gets worse. Let's take a look at this. I f***ing love this song. This was one of our top selling merch items of last year, by the way. <laughs> Profiting off of a man who's in jail for 30 years for trafficking. Real classy, Ethan and Hila. As much as they want to sit in their $10 million mansion and cry about social justice for all, it doesn't seem like they're very empathetic to the families of the victims of R. Kelly. You know, the countless women whose lives were ruined as a result of the actions of that one man. You know what R. Kelly is trying to do there in that song? Literally bring women from Ethiopia to America so he can commit some of the worst crimes on earth to those women and sometimes even imprison them in his home. This was one of our top selling merch items of last year, by the way. But of course, as long as it benefits Ethan and Hila's pockets, they don't actually care about any of this stuff. They just want to make money. I promise you, you will never see any ethical human being ever profiting off the words of a man who's confirmed to have married a little girl when she was 15 years old. And it gets worse. Would you look at that, Teddy Fresh, as of January 26, 2023, is still selling Rick and Morty Teddy Fresh custom Justin Roiland merch, proving yet again these people don't actually care about what's right and what's wrong. They care about making as much money as humanly possible while putting in the least amount of effort while also criticizing other people for doing exactly that. You're putting about as much effort into your content as you ever did. I can't stress this enough, I have no problem with most of this stuff individually. If if it weren't for his actions combined with the vile toxicity and hypocrisy of Ethan. When people call Ethan greedy, when they call him hypocritical, when they call him a grifter, it's not all just some meme that's pulled out of thin air. There is an undeniable truth that is behind that, and I think what I've shown you is more than enough evidence of that. 
Given the reach that the H3 podcast has, I believe Ethan has one of the highest net negative impacts on society as a whole, right behind those who directly worsen the lives of their fans, such as creators who promote gambling on platforms like Stake or full out scams like Save the Kids and MILF Token. While Ethan doesn't do any of that, which I highly commend him for given the amount of years he's been a creator and the offers I know he's received, the toxicity and negativity and hypocrisy he has exposed the general public to is overwhelmingly negative in my opinion. And before we end the video, I want to say, Ethan Klein is a 40 year old English major who can't say a single sentence without cursing. So I just wanted to say thank you, thank you Ethan Klein for being so incompetent that you've added literal days to the process of making this video. Oh yeah, and also if I got anything wrong in this 25 plus minute video, it's actually fine because- I'm not a journalist, this is not New York Times, I'm some fucking dude who's about I mean, to watch my employee eat a jar of mayonnaise. What research do you expect me to do exactly? What research do you expect me to do exactly? If you made it all the way till the end of this video, I think you'll like this video about Lost and Abby on the screen right now, or maybe this one. If you like the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. Aside from that, I hope you all have a great day.